Long overdue, the auto house shop car is getting a major refresh. Yeah, it's Memorial Day, three day weekend. But to quote one of my favorite rappers exhibit, you don't work, you don't eat, I repeat. So yeah, here we are. I got some customer work done in the morning time and I figured with no one in the shop or no one in the building, now's a great time to tear down the car. And in the grand scheme of things, we're trying to get this guy ready for eight, six day this year, which is gonna be huge by the way. Stay tuned for that announcement. All right, so just going over the car, a lot of things have been long overdue for this. I built this engine about seven years ago, it looks like, and a lot of stuff's antiquated at this point. You know, I felt like this really was a trendsetter in NorCal at, you know, one point. But yeah, that is definitely not the case. This is really antiquated stuff and I'm honestly embarrassed to pop the hood sometimes. So yeah, we're going to bring this up to 2022. All right, so just really quick off the top of my head, some big things that are going to happen for this car. We're going to push to get them done before 8.6 day this year. Full custom motorsports grade harness. Thank you to Bermuda Wire, who is actually local to us, also did the beam swap harness for the swap we did at the beginning of the year. Jixer 1000 motorcycle ITBs. We're gonna run a Link Monsoon. We're also gonna fix a handful of leaks and seeps that an engine has from seven year old rebuild. Also shoot, maybe like 30, 40, 50, at least 30 autocrosses, track days. Um, this was my daily driver. Uh, how many times sitting at the drive-thru for fast food. Yeah, this uh, this engine, this car has definitely served me well. Uh, now it's, in a way, almost time to pay this car back for, you know, serving us so well all these years. So yeah, let's take a look. All right, so my crude maintenance log, although very crude, very important. We're going to go back in time. All right, so if you look at this, not only have I owned the car since 2013, but these pieces of paper have existed since 2013 inside the car. And it looks like, where are we at? Oh, well, you can see the compression numbers from uh, 14, 40, and 20. Yeah, you're reading that right, 20 PSI. <laughs> so, looks like engine rebuild. 215 and 248 miles. Let's see. Let's see, so yeah, just about seven years since the rebuild. And also, at 277 so just about almost 30,000 miles so seven years and 30,000 miles on this engine yeah well deserved time for a refresh all right so a few things before we tear apart this engine or hopefully I don't have to tear it apart right I at minimum uh, doing the we're gonna put a new head gasket in it replace the oil pump front main seal and then also the oil pans leaking you gotta reseal the oil pan why are we doing the head gasket so the head gasket has an external seep. When I worked at the dealer, they described a leak as a physical drop of oil and a seep as kind of just like residue, right? No drop of oil appears, but there's like residue around the fending area. So the head gasket has pretty much seeped and the seep has gotten heavier. <laughs> and it's an external seep. This, uh, this thing doesn't consume coolant, it just seeps. Um, on the outside of the engine block. I know exactly why. So I had a terrible machine shop fiasco when I first built this engine. If you guys wanna hear that story, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, it's like a painful memory for me, honestly. Long story short, this has a HKS metal head gasket in it. And if you have a, any sort of metal head gasket, pretty much the surfaces have to be perfect. I know the block surface is not perfect. The machine shop that I used had a really sur rough surface on that engine block and I'm pretty sure along with the middle head gasket that's why I've always had this like seat for the longest. The right thing to do, um, take the block out, disassemble it, go get it uh, decked properly again to the proper RA finish. I don't want to go through all that honestly so we're going to put an OEM Toyota head gasket in it. Those are far more forgiving to seal up imperfections so I want to down this car for less than a couple months not less than a couple years please. <laughs> Again, we're trying to make 8-6 day this year. The goal for today is hopefully to get the head off. What do we got to do before that? Cool, got my compression tester. Leak down. So we're gonna do a compression leak down test on this engine, make sure everything's kosher before we just throw a head gasket on it. Make sure that there's nothing wrong with the block. And then hopefully I don't have to send the head 
to the machine shop either. I see a ton of mistakes and I get a lot of cars from other shops who don't know how to do a compression leak down test properly. First of all, you need to do both tests, com dry compression, wet compression, and then also leak down test. You need to do all three. If you just do a compression test, throw those results out the window. I don't care. And the thing is, if you think about the engine as an air pump for a compression test, you are building compression. So I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot. If you have problems like leaking valve, leaking head gasket, crack in the head, because you are building compression, those dry compression numbers, even the wet compression numbers, a lot of times will hide the leaking issues that will you know, reduce engine efficiency. Basically a leak down test will show you existing issues with the engine that a compression test will not tell you. That's why you need to do all three tests. All right, so here's our setup. It's good to do compression test at least a few times on each cylinder. Got my gauge set up inside the spark plug tube. Throttle's gotta be held open, so there's probably a better way to do this, but uh, it's my car, so I just put a screwdriver, make sure the throttle blade's open. Um, you can also have your assistant just hold the pedal down all the way. I have both fuel and ignition disabled. So in this case, my distributor's unplugged. Um, back in the trunk, I have my fuel pump disconnected because you don't want fuel to be spraying inside, diluting your oil, doing a whole bunch of bad stuff while you do your compression test. Got my battery charger hooked up. You want battery at full voltage at all the time because if you have a like low voltage battery or like another problem with the car, for example, like a bad start that's drawing too much, you're gonna get erroneous, uh, you're gonna get the wrong compression numbers if your starter or your batteries has a problem with it. So yeah, pretty much eight cranks, read it, do another eight cranks, see what the, what the numbers look like, and then we'll call it good. And the results, yeah. OMG! Our compression numbers, our cylinders, and also our leak down numbers. Any engine importer, any shop, you should get three sets of numbers every time. I don't give an F. Every single time, compression leak down, you should get three sets of numbers. The dry compression test, the wet compression test, and then the leak down. Uh, one more time, we did not do the wet compression test because these numbers look good, but on a customer car, if they if they pay for a compression and leak down test, I will absolutely do all three tests. So leak down numbers, <clears throat> another common problem I see with other shops or engine importers. They'll have the leak down percent. So in this case, this is great, right? Zero, zero, four, five. Some service manuals will have a spec on what allowable percentage leak is acceptable. Um, this has a spec too, don't look at this because this is like a general spec. You really want the factory service manual spec for both dry and wet compression and then also the leak down numbers. And then one more thing, variation between cylinders, right? So for some manufacturers, if you have, for example, seven PSI variants between cylinders, that would actually fail the compression test. So in a nutshell, all these would need to be within seven PSI of each other. A common problem I see when leak down tests are documented, they'll have the percentage, but they won't say where the, the leak is heard from, right? So again, we have a few places. The oil filler, which means the crankcase has an issue. The intake valves, or I'm sorry, the intake, which means the intake valves have an issue, or the exhaust valve, or the, the exhaust, or the, the muffler, which means the exhaust valves have an issue. Oh, there's actually two more I just thought of right now. If the radiator is bubbling, that means either the head gasket, the block, or the head have an issue. And then the very last one, let's say I leak it down through three, and I hear the air come out at a four. Very common, the head gasket is blown between three and four. So four potential places where it should be documented where this percentage leak is coming out of. All right. <laughs> Cool, man. So I am absolutely happy with those numbers considering how many hard miles I've put on this engine in this car. That at least means I don't have to take this to the machine shop for like, you know, let's say a complete valve job or I didn't burn a valve or something in here. I'm still going to take the head off and uh, put a, a straightness gauge on it and see the um, if the surface of the cylinder head is still is still within spec so I can just put another head gasket on it or you know that'll tell me if I need to send it to the machine shop to get the head resurfaced. Um, hopefully none of that. Hopefully I can just assemble the car. <laughs> but yeah absolutely ecstatic about those numbers. I am going to 
My goal before the end of the day is actually to get this head off. So I am going to go ahead and grind. I am going to go ahead and get to grinding to get this head off. Cause again, eight, six day fast approaches us. So I'll cut in with some updates, but hopefully before the end of this video, head will be off and I will have a big smile. Is that, that's not really a smile. <laughs> a few moments later. All right, it's just about nine o'clock and I'm gonna push through this, but yeah, we're just about there. Um, got the whole wire harness out, intake manifold off, exhaust manifolds off. Uh, pretty much what's left, all the timing belt stuff, cams, head bolts, should be good. Hopefully we don't stay here all night. <laughs> Trying to push through this. All right, so it's far later than I wanted, but we finally got the head off. We'll take a look at some details in the next episode, but yeah, heads off. All right, my far too thick HKS head gasket. <laughs> this guy will get replaced with the OEM Toyota unit. And yeah, this guy, so far so clean. Minus the, the water and stuff getting trapped in there, but whatever. <clears throat> we'll clean that up before the head goes back on. On the next episode, we'll turn this over, put a flatness gauge on it. Hopefully, we can just bolt on another head gasket and not have to send this to the machine shop. So, fingers crossed. Isn't that right, Dexter? So, yeah. Thank you guys for joining us on this adventure, refreshing the auto house car. I am super excited to get this thing running and screaming on ITVs, right? Real tune, real standalone. I'm absolutely excited. So. Questions, comments, what do you want to see next time? Let me know in the description below. Appreciate the support, you guys. I'll catch you guys next time.